Hey Steve, guess what she can do? What's that? Oh god, it looks freaky. Look at her hand. <laughs> oh god. What is this? Can't wait till we get into that review. Hey guys. How's it going? Oh gosh, she can almost do splits. Can she? I don't know. God, this, if her butt wasn't so huge. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god, that looks so weird. <laughs> I'm keeping this. I'm letting you know in advance. <laughs> Listen up, Rangers. Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve. My name's Arnaz. And today I'll be going over the bootleg Figma Sinone. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't know if this is bootleg yet, Steve. All right, so we ordered this from China. That's uh, indicator number one. And there's just like the telltale signs that this is a bootleg. The only thing I will say this, getting right into this, is that the box for this one actually doesn't look all that bad. Other than it's banged up because... Literally, the way the guy shipped it was he had this wrapped with plastic, stuck a label on it, and sent it to us. Amazing. And I just like to thank him because now I don't even need to question myself whether we need to keep the box for it or not. Because since the box is so banged up, it's going into the garbage. You know, Steve, this was one of my most expensive bootlegs I paid for. Yeah, what was it, like 20 bucks? 17 actually. Oh, sorry, $17 for this thing of beauty. <laughs> well, it was 25 He gave me 8 back because what he did with the shipping. Yeah, yeah. We, we, well, again, whenever you get a boot, like, always try to fight that stuff. <laughs> but this is from Sword Art Online 2, which is pretty much um, Fantasy World with guns. Kind of like Call of Duty in a sense. Kind of. Actually, I'd say it's more like Destiny. Yeah, it's more like Destiny. Yeah, it's more like Destiny in a way. And this is, uh, I gotta say, not my least favorite character in terms of characters from that series. Because anytime I had to watch this anime or Neza's house, all she ever did was cry. Wee. Whine about the situations. Wah. Literally, wah, wah, all the time. No, I love her character model. Like, her, her appearance in the anime, like, she looks awesome. She's hot. I really like this character design better than the one that's halfway through the show because they switch back to the uh, actual Sword Art Online universe and she gets a different character. Isn't she like a cat character or something? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that way. Like, at least this one. But has, it like, has cat ears. It makes her adorable. Then she probably wasn't crying anymore. I wouldn't know because I stopped watching the anime. <laughs> exactly. But, she actually stops crying. So, again, win win. She's not my favorite character. Thank you. Because anything with cat ears is instantly better. And she's got a tail too and Kirito yanks on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've been rambling last. So without further ado, for the packaging, we have the standard Figma packaging here where you have the black on the bottom with some text stating what the figure is. Hey, the Steve. color scheme for the top that matches the character. What? Uh, aren't we missing something here? Something shiny in this area? Yes. Uh, one of the indicators for this being a bootleg is if you have the legit one, it should have a sticker that is from the company that released Sword Art Online. Right around here. It'd be like circular and green. And since this doesn't have it, one of the good indications that this is a bootleg. Because, as an example, we have my Figma Ryukuma toy figure, which you can see right here has the sticker from the distribution company. And if it didn't have the sticker, I'd be definitely inclined to think that this is a bootleg. But you have to do some research when you're buying these figures because sometimes some of these figures don't actually come with any indications. Like for instance, my Giver Unit 1 from Giver the Bowed Boosted Armor. This one actually didn't come with any indication, but I literally got this thing brand new and it's from Big Bad Toy Store, so I'm 100% certain this isn't a bootleg, plus the packaging looks freaking fantastic on it which is another indication that this thing's real, is all the images on the back are super crisp. Wow. Well, this one, you look on the back, they are slightly fading. Not the worst I've ever seen. Oh, God, no. We had that Asuna where it was literally like there's a mirror image going on on the back here. This is actually borderline acceptable for me. Like, if it wasn't for the missing sticker on the front here for this packaging... There's not really any other real clear indicators for me anyways to really tell that this is a bootleg. Then you can see there's a giant Barco covering her face with a sniper on the bottom, or on the top. Bottom looks pretty cool overall, but again, it's a little... Yeah, you can little, start seeing, yeah, can start seeing here, especially where the image out of her is a little bit faded on there. But again, for the most part, like especially the writing here looks fantastic, so... 
it's a little bit hard. Like this is actually pretty acceptable for a bootleg for me. But anyways, let's get her open up out of her cardboard prison. All right, so now that we got her open up out of her cardboard prison, first we're gonna go over her wide range of accessories, starting with an extra head. Why is there an extra head, Steve? All right, so you may notice that she is wearing a scarf. What this head is primarily for is if you don't want her to have the scarf, you can remove it. Because, I'll show you guys right now with her head accessory. For her head sculpt on the figure here, actually looks not that bad. I actually like the face overall that she comes with, where this is more of her stagnant kind of like, I'm not into you kind of expression. But the paint job on it actually, for a bootleg, is pretty nice. Like They even added some paint on the mouth, which is a one-up for these figures. The only thing is, is her hair is a little bit fugly, in my opinion. A little bit. With the uh, paint job that they have on it. Like, for the most part, it replicates the colors from the anime, but it's definitely a lot duller than I would like to see. That, and it kind of looks like they just washed over some, like, oil-based paint, so it, it seems like it's kind of has, like, that thick film to the top of this, which isn't very appealing. That, and her head doesn't really uh, hook on appropriately. And then we're going to take the front of the head off, which is... I literally, when we were uh, trying to mess around with this figure a little bit, I had to sit here and squish this into shape so that it would sit on here because it wanted to sit like this when we initially got it. So I had to fudge around with it a little bit. Got it to sit a little bit more flush to stay in. But you remove that part. And then the face is supposed to stay on. It doesn't. <laughs> what other uh, faces does she have, Steve? Well, for some other faces, we have. I was just trying to get to that. I'm trying to see which one. If I could get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wrong. There we go. She has. Looking to the side, happy expression. So she can kind of like snipe at you with a snarky smirk from an angle. Have ever told you I hate sniper rifle, Steve? Uh, it is literally my favorite thing in first person shooters. Because when I'm playing Call of Duty, it's either I want to be super close to you with a shotgun. Or I want to be super far away from you, sniping you in the distance. Or also being point blank sniping because I'm one of those quick scoping kind of douches. But for her other head, she comes with a looking to the left angry face. Oh, I'm going with that one. Well, I guess technically it's looking to the right, but if you had it this way, it's looking to the left. But anyways, this one actually isn't that bad. Like I Generally, whenever I have like girls posing on my shelf, if they have multiple faces that I'm allowed to have, usually I go with the open expression, even if it's usually with the angry faces because usually I have them posing dynamically anyways. So these expressions work a little bit better for me. And, again, for being a bootleg, the expressions actually work pretty well. It's just how the head is set up and the hair is not how I would like it to be. And I think with the original version, it would definitely be a one-up. But now, we're going to disassemble the head so that we can attempt to remove the scarf. And I'm kind of scared right now because this doesn't want to come out. Ugh. All right. So what you're going to want to do when you're removing the head is you're going to want to pull out straight from the neck. You'll see it right there under the scarf. So you're just going to pull upwards and hopefully not pop the head off the joint, which is what I was afraid of. <laughs> Good job, Steve. Right, well, we got the scarf off. I'm winning. So what we're going to do... <laughs> God, can I see what that looks like, Steve? No. No, you can't. You I want my it. AdSense. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming off, darn it. Halfway there, Steve. <laughs> you want, would you oh, like it's, it's getting loose. Oh, there we go. Would you like the pliers, Steve? Ooh. I think I'm good. All right, so we got it off. <laughs> You're a monster. Where's Woody? You broke her in half. <laughs> Woody will not be happy, Steve. When you get your figure for less than $10, I'm not that concerned about it, you know? But anyways, attaching the new head, because what this does is if you want the scarf off, and this does not want to go in. Did it. If you want the scarf off, this gives you access to having her neck not look so freaking crazily <laughs> fugly. I actually like that a lot, because now you can actually see her cleavage a little bit. Not trying to sound inappropriate, but it just shows off a little bit more of her body, which I think I appreciate, because then her chin and stuff isn't really hiding in the scarf but first time you meet her as a character she's wearing the scarf like that's how she gets introduced it's part of her outfit it's her armor i guess i mean i don't know what it's supposed to be protecting but, but she doesn't have it the entire time because then they wouldn't give you this extra accessory 
So maybe I prefer to see her a little collar around her neck and a little bit of extra package, I guess. I'm going to put her waist back on. Yeah, it's freaking me out. <laughs> and maybe I can actually fix this. Hey, it's not looking so bad anymore. Because one of the issues we were having is it wasn't sitting right. Now there's no articulation there, though. So um, mm. yeah, It's a win-lose situation. <laughs> we'll come back to it. But I actually really like the inclusion of the head. And the hair actually sits on this portion a little bit better. It goes on easier, but the problem is, is this one, I'm going to have that little gap here no matter what for this one. But moving on, she also comes with a extra hand accessory just in case you snap this, which is pretty sweet because... It is a bootleg, so I do worry about these things. So it's nice that it's included in the packaging because the original one came with it, so why not? She also comes with a wide assortment of hands, which I'm not going to attach onto the figure, but just so you guys get a better look, because she does come with a gripping hand, pointing finger, two open hands for smacking things. You have her, what I'm assuming is for the sniper rifle, because the trigger finger is a little bit outwards. You have another one for the opposite hand. Then you have her left hand for cupping the sniper rifle. And then right hand for... She has a lot of gripping it. Ah, yeah. Then she comes with her trademark pistol slash Glock or whatever it is called in the anime. I'm not sure the specific details. You guys can let us know in the comment section below or if Arnez would like to indulge us. It's a gun that she shoots Sweet. with. Sweet! But for the details for the pistol overall, it has actually a lot of really nice molded details. Surprisingly, it looks pretty good. Just the overall color scheme for this is pretty bland with it just being primarily black, but overall, not too bad. And then next, we will go over her sniper rifle, which we already seem to have an issue. <laughs> hey, hey, don't make fun of my sniper rifle. Well, I don't want to because me personally, I love sniper rifles and most of the details on this actually look pretty good. I think they capture the paint job pretty decently. The handle maybe could have been done a little bit better, but for the most part, nothing too uh, out of the ordinary. See, you can't ask for both, Steve. You can't have a good paint job sniper rifle and be in pieces, you know? <laughs> Touche. Because again, for a lot of the molded details, works really well for me. It even has like the opening here at the end of the barrel, if it will ever zoom in on it. There we go. Overall, pretty nice bore on the front of it. And I like, I love the details on it, but we're going to get into some of the parts that I really don't like about this. Like, See what'd you do to my gun, man? I did absolutely nothing. I just got it out of the packaging and it was already in two pieces. <laughs> Which, I figured out the problem here. Now, you guys probably won't be able to see it on the bottom here, but when you look inside where it's supposed to slot into, it's flat. There's no grooves, nothing to align it with how it's set up on the back of the stock here. So, it doesn't rest at all, which means I would probably have to shave this off in order to be able to use this stock that or glue it on, which you don't want to do because it does come with an extra stock, which what this is is for the bipods because this also comes with bipods, which we'll go over in just a second. But this one, it actually sits on there really flush. Like it works really well with this stock. And it's just, no matter what I try to do with the settings here, it's not going to line up. And then this part just keeps getting in the way. So, um, Arnez, your sniper rifle overall, I'm going to say is a big ball of fail. But... It does come with bipods that are retracted, so you can stick them here on the under section of the sniper rifle, which overall stays in there really nicely. And then you also get open bipods if you want to have her laying down sniping. That's what we're going to have to do if that part's broken, you know? Yeah, I won't, it's not really broken. It's just it's not molded correctly is the problem here. So mm -hmm. I guess that's how it's going to have to be. Yeah, so primarily you probably just have a setup like this if you really want it. You can even just have it just sitting on the display next to her. Yeah, I'm going to have her holding, like, the Glock. and Yeah, that'd probably be the best thing, in my opinion. And then, also, comes with a little blooming effect for when you have the Glock. The Glock is supposed to rest on the inside of this. Which? Oh, oh it, it does. What accessory works? <laughs> All right, we found your permanent piece. Overall, that looks pretty cool. The bloom's at a weird angle. Uh, you know, we're all with it. Overall, it looks actually pretty cool, though. I actually like this little effect, especially when you have it with her, so she'd be like, blim, blim, blims. Busting caps in people's. And then for her final accessory, we have... The Figma stand. Uh, I don't know where you see Figma. I see a stand. Do you have a marker? Um, Actually, I do. Hold on a <laughs> second. <fix> it, <laughs> which also comes with a little arm, which... Wow, your arm is really loose. 
Oh, thanks for hurting my feelings, Steve. <laughs> you, gotta, you need some of them gains. Which can be solved because it does have screws, so you just tighten it up if you really need it to. But what this is, is just to uh, help hold our Sinone upright, which what this is going to do is peg it into her lower back, which we will see if that's actually going to work on this figure. God, you really are a monster, dude. You're shoving this into her spine. It's fine. Actually, there we go. Stays in. Can we? Can we? No. <laughs> nope. No. Oh, God, what did I do to her legs? I just realized. <laughs> oh, I am a monster. And then for the stand, too, it also comes with this little accessory piece, which you just hook onto the end of the peg on the stand here. Which, what this is, is it primarily is here for just to give her a better angle. So you can have it arcing a little bit better. So if you want to have the stand resting on the ground, you can have her standing perfectly upright or it gives her a little bit more added dynamic posing. But for the most part, it's one of those accessories I never really use on these when I use the stand with the Figmas. The only thing that kind of sucks for yours, aren't it, is yours is kind of got a little gap missing out of it. Then next for her finer details, we will go hey, Steve, over... Yeah? You forgot two accessories. I know she has a lot, so I'll forgive you this time, but you forgot the Figma bag and the scarf. What Figma bag? It comes with a Figma bag. I'm uh, pretty sure yours didn't. Oh, uh, yeah. Where are we? I got it. One second. Uh, where is he going? Here you go. You go over this bag, man. That is a it's where I'm gonna hold all my accessories at, Steve. But that's the bag that it can't. It's not a thing my bag. <laughs> but sorry for the scarf. The scarf is mildly articulated on the back with some hinges. Problem is, if I mess around with this too much, these pop off really easy. So that is a concern I have. But there is some rotation here. And for the most part, it's just made out of white plastic with some. A little black paint lining here for a little bit added detail. Overall, looks pretty decent. And then since we already pretty much went over her head sculpt, we're going to start with the upper body, which looks actually not that bad for this figure. I'm going to say it's kind of like some of like what you would consider more figures meant for adult collector state side, like the Black Series figures, Marvel Legends, even the new Power Rangers series. I feel like the detail work for the paint job for this figure is on par with those. Yeah, but when you look uh, when you look at it next to the original one, Steve. But next to other Figmas, it doesn't look that great, which is acceptable because for the price you're paying, you're yeah, can't complain for seventeen dollars, you know. Yes, yeah, so which is kind of why I compare it to those figures because those figures run about twenty bucks, which is about what I feel the amount of work was put in the paint job is pretty much what's on those. But for Jackie, you get a little bit of that military green with some gray here for some added detail. Some black work here for the lining. Actually looks pretty decent. They even got some paint here on the little buttons. Looks great. Same with some gray here on the cuffs. The hands are actually sculpted pretty decently. The only thing is, is the paint job maybe could have been a little bit cleaner. It doesn't look too bad on these. But you can see some of the paint isn't matching up with the lines. And you can see it gets a little bit faded. And it even shows up a lot on the hands on here too, especially with the open palm ones. Like that one right there, the black isn't very consistent with the paint job. But for a body, it actually still looks pretty good. We have this, uh, I don't even know what to really call that. It's kind of like a corset. It's a vest, man. Bulletproof vest to protect her from getting shot. Sure thing. But the details actually do stand out pretty decently, especially with her chest area here and... The details on her hips, you can even see a little bit of her uh, crack right there. Because she does wear some very, very thin booty shorts. But the detail does look pretty nice there. You even have her belt, which is missing something. Because uh, I do believe it's supposed to have a grenade right there. And then you also have the little holster right here for her Glock. And then, I forget what that's actually supposed to be. You know what that is? It's that thing, device she uses when uh, she's fighting in a uh, tournament. To bring up the radar, the map, you know. Oh, okay. All right. So that's what that is. She also has a gold, well, I can't say gold. It's like a dark yellow colored Same belt. Same as this one up here. Actually, that's more of what I would consider like a goldish color. It's what not like shiny, but not <laughs> definitely more shiny than the belt there. What is that up there? That? I don't know, you know as much as I do. And with her shorts here, you have what's kind of appears to be a cowboy setup. I'm not sure exactly what's called, but you have the paint legs here with the little flaps here that hook out to the belt. It's armor, man. I'm telling you. It's like a weird garter belt. <laughs> it <looks> weird. <laughs> yeah, but the details do show up pretty well. You even got some folding of the fabric on the side of her legs here. 
and her boots with a little bit of yellow here for the couplings on the sides. Which, overall, like, detail-wise, it's not that bad. No, it's not. For a bootleg, God, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I, I do appreciate it for what it is. It's mainly, as of right now, the accessories are definitely what's the most lackluster thing. But, moving on to her articulation, her head could look about that far up, that far down, without the scarf, with the scarf. You still get about the same range of motion when you use the extra neck. You could also rotate all the way around, full 360 exercise style. Arm can go... Up about that high, down about that far, rotate, I believe, all the way around. It takes a little bit of effort. Rotation up at the shoulder, a rotation at the elbow. Also, pretty nice bend at the elbow, rotation at the hand. Also has a little bit of a swivel at the hand. Has a rotation at the lower portion of her chest, and also at the waist. Oh god, don't do that, it looks creepy. <laughs> but you do get a little bit of a wiggle, a little bit of a rotation. Her legs can... Go about that far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That, was that They can't really go outwards, I'm noticing. But they can move a little bit forward, a little bit back. Wow, that's actually a horrible range of motion here at the well, leg. This thing is in a way, dude. Look at that. Can't really move that around too much, with, especially with the fear of this tearing. But she does have a bend here at the knee. Also has a rotation at the knee. Also, technically a rotation here at the thigh, but nothing too amazing either. And then her feet can bend forward and back and not rotate because I'm afraid that I'm just about yeah, to move that. Yeah, that sounded weird. And, nope, that one's going to do it too. So the rotation at the feet are pretty much non-existent. Also, just want to mention, Glock does actually fit in her holster. Already better than Kirita. Hey, don't make, don't make fun of him. So for some quick comparison, here we have Sino and comparing next to some other Figma bootlegs with the Sword Art Online Kirito and Asuna. Steve, I wish she had a face like this. That's an awesome face. Hey, here she has some actual legit Figma figures with Asuka Langley Soryu from Neon Genesis Evangelion and Yami Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh. Hey, Steve, you remember the last thing? The last uh, comparison we did? Yeah. But I'm worth more than your entire collection. Now, here's Sino Comparator to some other bootlegs with my personal bootleg, the Memorial Box 1984 Godzilla. And Super Sonico. That's not a bootleg, Steve. It's a bootleg. Uh, it came with a Figma stand. Yes, it's also the Figma. It did. Actually, yeah, it did. It did come with a box. We can show you the box because we're going to review this one next whenever we finally get around to that one. But the box is amazing. Oh, spoilers. It's styrofoam. <laughs> so in the end for the bootleg Figma sign on figure, overall, I don't really think it's all that bad for what Arnaz paid for around $20. Because the detail for the figure is actually not that bad, minus is missing the grenade. It does still have a decent amount of articulation and comes with a lot of accessories. But, because of the bootleg, just be forewarned. If you do decide to get this one over the legit one, be prepared to have to fix something with it. There's always something wrong with it. And I'm kind of happy that mine, as a figure, came out fine. It's the accessories that are bad on mine, you know. And that's something I can deal with because I can just put in the other stock in a sniper rifle and lay in front of her, you know. Now, would we recommend this over the actual Figma? Which you have to remember, she's actually kind of pricey nowadays. Yeah, I looked it up. If you want to get the legit one, you have to start looking in the $80 to $100 area for her. Which is my problem with the Evangelion figures because I need a Ray. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> she's like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, like... You can get one for like $80 plus 20, 30 shipping, you know, or you can get one like $100, no shipping. Yeah, it's which you rank. might be able to find some decent deals, but hardcore looking, you're going to pay a little bit of money for it. Now, if you can get the one that I have with the details on the one, like this one for $20, then I would recommend it over it, you know? I still would try to find one. I, I, I really have a hard time ever recommending these bootlegs. Especially when they first came out. Oh, God. Like, definitely the sign on. But then, later on, you may need this one figure to finish your collection. And you want to skimp out a little bit on the money there. Because it's not that important. Because if it's like, would I recommend Asuna? God, no. You know, would I recommend Kirito? God, no. Like, they're horrible. Yeah, like, this is the closest I've ever been to really fully recommending it. Outside of the 84 Godzilla. Because 84 Godzilla... You can't fudge it up that much, so of course yeah. it's not going to be that bad. 
But also, what's the difference between $30 and $200 and this being $20 and $100? Yeah. Considering, like... I, I can I, The gap isn't nearly as big for me. Yeah, considering, like, how, you know, there is some online you can find of these for, like, a dollar, two dollars. I don't know if I would recommend those, you know? Yeah, because with this being a bootleg, it's not going to be the exact same as the one we got. Like, yours might have better hair than ours. But yours might have a broken foot or the foot is like, or like some of the articulation on it's going to be a little bit wonky or your face isn't going to be as nearly painted, but your hands might look a little bit better. Like it's, it, there's not going to be a consistent quality between each of the figures. But judging this as the figure as it is, Steve, what do you think is the worst thing wrong with it? Except, uh, the sniper rifle is the easiest thing that I've been most disappointed on. Um, I don't like her hair, man. I wish like I could fix the hair because I seen the legit one's hair and it's so nice compared to this one. but then again it's like it's sitting on the shelf you're not really paying like me just sitting here looking at it on the table looks fine yeah but when you get up close, when i pick it up and hold it in my hand it kind of looks poopy <laughs> but for the most part this is gonna be standing on a shelf so i feel like that being an issue isn't nearly as high as say i want to have her holding the sniper rifle Oh, wait a minute, I can't. But for me personally, I would still say try to get the legit one because if you don't support Figma, they're not going to release more figures. So if you can, definitely pick up the legit one. But if you are looking to pick up the bootleg, this isn't a bad option compared to most of the other Sword Art Online figures. But what do you guys think of side note? Would you guys consider picking up the bootleg or is it legit? So more you think, please let us know in the comments. Look closer picture of this girl on Facebook. You want to click the link in the description below. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button. Subscribe, become a ranger today. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Oh, I'm buying this. How much is it? Two dollars. Oh, it's expensive. All right, we'll go with this one. It's three dollars. She's riding a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Why do I feel like I need this in my life? Questions that need to be answered.